Hey there, it's Shannon Graham Cornell from Better Home Organizing at BetterHomeOrganizing.com. And I'm here today to talk about um, what to do if you only have a few minutes to organize. And, uh, you know, if you don't have all day to devote to a project or a whole weekend or a whole month to devote to a project, can you still a achieve an organized space? And the good news is, yes, you can. Um, it'll take a little bit longer, but it's completely doable. So that's what we're going to focus on today. What if you're busy and you only have those 15 minutes here and there? Um, or maybe if you're lucky, you have a couple of hours on a weekend, but really no more than that. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and Listen, I love getting to organize a space where I am pulling everything out and I'm able to holistically assess the function of a whole room and um, you know, really think about uh, all of the categories of objects that I keep in that space and really plan it out. In fact, when I did that, um, or the last time I did that was when I was redoing my home office. And I actually, I did it during the work day. So my husband was at work and I had a blast sending him really terrifying pictures of an empty home office. Like I'd cleared everything out and piles of stuff all over the floor, uh, kind of in the open area that, um, uh, is really my home office is on the entry level of our townhome. So really the only thing here is the home office and a front door and a garage door and the access to our living level. And all of the space that was not my home office was full of categories of stuff. And he was terrified. He was like, Oh, and I had to remind him it often gets worse before it gets better. Um, and that was a blast. And I had everything put away uh, pretty much final uh, when he got, by the time he got home. But here's the thing. I was working all day by myself with no distractions. I was the owner of all of the objects. So I was the decision maker for everything in the room. I didn't have to consult anybody else. And I was able to focus on that project. And it still took me all day. So, I mean, it was not a quick project. That's a special circumstance. We don't really often get that where, you know, everyone in our house goes away and we're able to just tackle a single space without having any interruptions. So on the one hand, it's so much fun to organize that way, but it's not going to happen like that all the time. So, um, or maybe even very often, depending on, uh, you know, the environment you have in your home. And if you've got littles, then forget it. You're not going to get a whole weekend of uh, organizing time. So how do you do that in 15 minutes or so? Uh, if you're lucky, a couple of hours. Um, so I have a couple of recommendations for how to get started and for how to make the most out of those 15 minutes. So the first recommendation I would give you is start with the space in your home, and it's gonna vary from person to person, but start with the space in your home that really bothers you. It may bother you because it's just messy looking, and so when you look at it, it's just super stressful, um, just because it's so cluttered, it really bothers you. It may bother you because getting to the stuff in that space is annoying. It may be that, you know, everything that you seem to always need is like the third box from the bottom of a pile of boxes. And so you have to, you know, move everything out of the way to get to what it is you're looking for. Or it just could be a space where it's not organized in any way so that you can find what you're looking for. Any of those spaces or, you know, any of those reasons could make a space something that would bother you. So start there. And what the reason I say start there, and it could be your bedroom, it could be your kitchen, it could be your entryway, a bathroom, whatever. And it does, it'll, like I said, it'll vary from person to person. Um, but start there for two reasons. One, you're gonna get some immediate relief from getting the space that bothers you most organized. So, you know, start there because you're going to see some benefits immediately 
and that'll motivate you to keep going. So if it's a room you don't really care about or you know you think you should start there, don't do that. Start with what really annoys you. So pick the place that, that, that drives you the most crazy and start there. And then after that, it's kind of like, you know, the old joke about how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That's how you want to approach this as well. You want to think about your project in small portions, 15 minute chunks. Even if you have more time, by the way, than 15 minutes on any given day, still think about it in 15 minute chunks. The nice thing about that is then no matter what, if you get interrupted, you get a phone call, you know, one of the little ones needs you, whatever, someone comes to the door, um, you are within an easy stopping point, you know, with, within a reasonable distance of an easy stopping point. So think about it in small, small chunks. I would also recommend pairing it with something that's enjoyable. So maybe being on the phone with a friend while you're sorting through some things or putting on your you know, favorite TV show that you like to have on in the background or listening to a podcast, particularly if that kind of thing isn't a distraction. For me, it's actually a distraction. I, when I'm organizing, I need quiet, um, but that's not typical. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, but if, if there's something that, that is um, pleasing to you that you can pair with an, a 15, organi 15 minute organizing push, do that. Um, and again, as I said, even if you have more time than 15 minutes, still keep it to small chunks. So what would that actually look like? Let's talk about a space that, um, a, you know, a common space for people and talk about what would that look like. So let's say it's the kitchen and you're like, I, I just really, I want to get control of my kitchen. You know, I've got extra stuff everywhere and, and you know, it's just, it's, it's unwieldy and I want to get started there. Pick a drawer, start with the junk drawer, start with, it doesn't matter what drawer, but pick a drawer and, or a shelf or, you know, a cabinet. But actually, if you pick a cabinet, I would still pick like a subsection of the cabinet. Um, but let's say we're going to start with a drawer. So we're going to start with the junk drawer. Why not? It's, it seems like, you know, it's a place where a lot of the catch all stuff ends up and, and we need to, um, you know, we can start working through that. Seems easy enough. The only thing I want you to do with that drawer is I want you to sort into three categories, toss slash recycle, donate and keep. So go through that drawer and that's it. You're not, you know, categorizing any further than that. It's just, am I keeping it? Am I throwing it away or am I donating it? And that's all. And if you get through that drawer, it should take you, it probably, maybe it won't even take you 15 minutes to do that, depending on what's in the drawer, but pull everything out, take everything out of the drawer and do that. There's something magical about taking everything out and looking, seeing it out of context. It's kind of like when you went to the grocery store when you were a little kid and you saw your teacher in the grocery store and you're like, you just thought of that person completely differently than you normally did because they were out of context. The same thing is true with our stuff. So pull it all out. And, but again, you're only dealing with one, one small subsection of all your stuff. Um, you know, if, you, if you're able to pull all your stuff out of your kitchen and look at it all, that's fabulous, but that's gonna take you way more than 15 minutes. That's a lot of 15 minutes all strung together. So again, take it all out and just do that very simple sort. It stays, it goes to for donation or it goes for the garbage can or the recycle bin. And that's it. You're, and then your 15 minutes are done. So you, you have your, the stuff that you've decided you, you're keeping, you put that all back in the drawer and you can just throw it all back in. It, you don't even have to do anything with it more than that for this first 15 minutes. But the next 15 minutes when you come back, now you're able to go through and you don't have to worry about is there donate in here? Is there trash in here? You know that everything that's in there you've already made a decision about and you're keeping it. Now you can look at it from the perspective of am I keeping it here in this drawer or is it going somewhere else? So now you can look at it from that standpoint. So maybe as you were going through, you found um, Sharpie markers or something and you realize, oh, um, actually I've got Sharpie markers 
over, you know, across the room somewhere else. And it actually makes more sense for all those things to get, go together, it, but it's not going to stay in that drawer. Great. So in that case, what you want to do is take all of the things that are going elsewhere. So this little pile of stuff is going to the linen closet and this little pile of stuff is going to the garage and this little pile of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Everything that you're keeping now stays in the drawer in the, in that junk drawer. And you've got these little piles of things that are going elsewhere. Put those little piles of things either in a, you know, a little baggie or a box, depending on how much there are, they are, take them to their, their locations, but don't try to put them away. Just, just put them, you know, tuck them somewhere out of the way, but don't try to organize anything there. All you're doing is you're taking the things that are going to the linen closet, to the linen closet, you're putting it there. And when you get to the linen closet and you get to organizing the linen closet, when you're done with your kitchen, that's when you'll deal with it. What you don't want to do is yo-yo organizing. So you start in your kitchen and you find an object that needs to go to your linen closet. So then you go to your linen closet and then you try to figure out where you're going to put it in the linen closet. And then you find these other things in the linen closet that actually you want to, you want to put in the guest bedroom closet. And so you go there and pretty soon you are bouncing all around your house and you've never come back to your kitchen and your 15 minutes are up and the contents of that junk drawer are still strewn all over your kitchen counter. We want to avoid that. So temporarily, if you find things that you want to put elsewhere, take them there, but don't try to organize it yet. You'll get there. Eventually you'll get to that spot. So I think that's a, a, a good next, you know, 15 minute chunk. And then after that, now you've got the things that are staying in that drawer and you've got your, um, and, and it's, it's clear of any other decisions other than what are the categories of things. So now is where you, you know, put all your pens together and all your scissors and whatever, whatever you have in this drawer um, and uh, make decisions about putting those into light categories. And then, cause you do want to keep like things together. That's one way to keep, um, keep uh, a good sense of what things you have, what things you, and might, what things you might need or things you don't need any more of. I have plenty of Sharpie markers. I don't need any more of those. So keeping like with like is a good way to keep a handle on um, what you've got and not to overbuy in that area uh, or not to over collect in that area. And at this point, you can also then take a look at, maybe this is your next 15 minutes, look around your house and, or well actually look at the, the, the drawer first. Do you need any like little temporary products to help keep what you've done in that one drawer tidy while you work on the next space. So that's, this is where you might look around your house and see if you've got any extra bins that, you know, from something else, or you can cut down a shoe box or, you know, do some kind of makeshift stuff or go to the dollar store and get yourself some, some cheap dividers, uh, you know, or something like that to help keep things tidy. Um, or you can skip that step altogether. Um, if, if you're, if you're not, um, uh, interested in getting any products just yet because here's what you're gonna do the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to pick the next space so the next drawer the next cabinet and you're gonna keep that process going until and and how many you know chunks like this you need to do is gonna be dependent on how much stuff you've got how big the room is um, but with a kitchen you know you might end up the next st stage is you know what today I'm gonna look at my dishes and only look at your dishes. Don't look at anything else. Just today, I'm going to evaluate my dishes. What's keeping, you know, what am I keeping and what am I donating or recycling? Um, the next day it's pots and pans, the next, you know, the, or the next 15 minute segment. Um, and you can keep moving through that way. When you get to the end of a space, you get to, you've done all the spaces, you've done all the individual drawers and cabinets and whatnot. Then you can actually step back because you will have recently seen everything in that space. And then you can make some adjustments. So it may be that the first drawer you did and the last drawer you did have like items in there. You can make a decision then about, do I want to corral them all together in this one drawer here? Do I want to you know, move them somewhere else? And that way, then you can do a check holistically. Okay, so now that I've been through each individual drawer and cabinet and shelf, does it make sense? You know, do I need to move some things around and do some final tweaking? 
and then that's when you can go buy some product. Um, if you decide at that point, yep, I need a basket to keep my measuring cups in, or I need a divider for to keep the spatulas separate from the wooden spoons, then you've got that, you've got that all worked out. But you've had a chance to think holistically about your room, but you've only, you've done it in 15 minute chunks. And that way you can keep picking at it. It's not the fastest way to get your home organized, but it's effective. And it's something that you can, you can also do it, do it too when you are, you've already organized your home and now you're trying to maintain it. When you're doing, you know, a, a quarterly check-in or a monthly check-in, depending on how often you want to check in, you can do a quick 15 minute scan you know, of several areas. Because again, you are working with spaces that are already organized. So at this point, it should be just a quick zhuzh of the spaces. So, um, uh, you know, and, and uh, so that, that's good for maintaining. It's also a really good strategy, by the way, if you are just completely overwhelmed by a room. You walk into a room and it's a hot mess and you don't know where to start. It's a really great strategy. Start with one box, one bag, one corner, you know, one little space. Go at it for 15 minutes and just think, what keep, what do I, what am I keeping? And don't even think about where am I keeping it? What am I keeping? What am I tossing? What am I donating? And just do that. And that will get you so far down the road and you can just keep picking at it that way. Um, so that is my suggestion for what to do if you've got only 15 or so minutes every so often to help keep working toward getting organized. Um, and I think if you try it out, then you'll find that that works for you. And listen, if you get a day where you got, hey, you have a whole bunch of 15 minute chunks strung together, then that's a bonus and that's awesome. But still think about it in small portions, small chunks, and just keep nibbling one bite at a time and you'll get it done. So thanks everyone. They have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow for day 19. Today was day 18. So bye everybody.